I gotta tell you a funny story from the other day. Well, it's actually not so funny. It's uh, There's a surprise. A, yeah, it's a story with my <laughs> dad and or our dad and our fertilizer expense for this fall. Not, and we were, not funny. Not a funny subject. Yeah, so we were talking about break-evens and things like that and and cash rents and all this stuff. And, and so we started running through all our costs because I said, our cost of production for corn this next year is gonna be over $4 a bushel. And he's like, oh no, whatever. And so we run through, you know, how much seed corn is gonna cost and chemical and everything. We get down to fertilizer. And I said, well, you know, on our best fields where we're going for 250 bushel corn and it's continuous corn, we are gonna spend $400 an acre on fertilizer. And he about passed out. He goes, that's more than I paid for some of this ground years ago. <laughs> And I said, well, that's what it is, 400 bucks an acre, if you're gonna do it right for 250 bushel continuous corn. But I said, here's what most guys are gonna do. They're gonna start cutting back. They're gonna cut back on phosphorus or cut back on potassium. Some of these things they may be able to get by with depending on the year, but you know you're just falling backwards if you start doing things like that. So we're investing some serious cash out there. And you know, how do we know what the right thing is to do? That is how we look at things. We're making a large investment when we're putting fertilizer out in our fields and whenever you're making an investment whether it's with fertilizer or on the stock market you want to do a little bit of research into what you're investing that money in now when it comes to your fertility program for your farm we're talking about NPK sulfur calcium micronutrients all these things that are going into it and you don't want to put a whole bunch of money out there and then wonder later man, did I make the right choices? Am I putting on too much of one? Could I have spent that money on another nutrient? And the way that you start your program out is right now in the fall, do some good soil testing on your farm, and we'll show you how we're doing that testing and how we'd suggest you do as well. Now, we were joking a little bit earlier when we started the show, and I just said, boy, that sounds like a lot of work. You know what, soil testing is a little bit of work, but the kind of work I like to do are $100 an hour jobs. We talk about that a lot on the farm. If you're going to be successful, you're gonna make money, you have to do jobs that really pay off. So think about this. Let's say I've got a quarter of land, I got 160 acres out there, and I do spend $400 an acre. How many total dollars have I just spent on that one field for fertilizer? I mean, you're talking over $60,000 just in this one field. Do you think it's a good investment to maybe spend uh, two, 300 bucks to do some soil testing? I think that would probably pay off. So you wanna go out there and pull some soil cores and pull a few soil cores and blend those together. But the key is you wanna blend them together in a small area, not just do a couple soil samples over the whole field. You wanna do not necessarily grid sampling, but at least zone sampling. So let's talk about the difference between those two to begin with. Well, with grid sampling, you would draw your field up, map it out and say, okay, every one acre or every two acres or every four acres, I'm going to do a soil test. So you've got these squares that you've drawn all across your field, really without looking at soil types necessarily or the, the lay of the land or anything like that. You're just looking at in this one acre spot, this is what's gonna happen in the next one acre spot. Here's what's gonna happen. It obviously costs quite a bit of money. You're gonna be doing an awful lot of tests out there and there are some positive uses for it too. I'm not totally negative about grid sampling, but there are quite a few more guys looking for zone sampling to save a little money and possibly to be a little bit more useful on the farm. So what we're talking about with zone sampling is basically you can combine some of those grids and you'll find that out if you're worried about zone sampling. I'd suggest doing grid sampling for one year and just see where the grids are that are the same and then in the future combine those grids that are the same. That's basically what we're talking about with zone sampling. But the other thing is we'll sample hilltops separate from side hills, separate from valleys. So as long as you're doing something like that and taking the topography into account, you're taking different soil types into account, you can do a good job with your soil sampling. And let's say you've got a zone that ends up being five acres or 10 acres, it doesn't matter what the size of that is. The key is you wanna get a few soil cores out there and blend those together in that five or 10 acres. So don't just take one sample in one spot. You wanna get a representative sample, so you need to pull a few soil cores. Now, when you're running these tests, you wanna make sure you're running a complete test as well. You don't just want an N, P, and K test. You want to see things like base saturation, soil pH, cation exchange capacity, and definitely all the micronutrients as well. So do spend just a few extra dollars to make sure you're getting a complete test so, versus just your basic test. So roughly what's that going to cost? You're looking at about $25 or $30 per sample. 
Okay, and the, here's the other thing. Normally people will do zero to six inch samples. What we would suggest is at least in a couple of spots in the field. Take some deeper cores. So do your zero to six in all your different zones, but then also in a couple of spots, take a six to 12 inch sample, a 12 to 18, and an 18 to 24 inch sample. So that way you can find out what's going on a little deeper in the soil. Well, this is really important because you want to feed that soil all the way down. When you're looking at where your roots feed are going- Feed the soil to, or feed the plant? You want, you want to feed the <laughs> soil all the way down so you can feed the plant because the plant is going to pull nutrients wherever its roots are at, it's trying to pull moisture in and pull nutrients as well. But when you get into the mid-summer and your soil is starting to dry out in that top six inches, you don't necessarily have the fertility available that you may think you do. So you do need to look at what's a little bit deeper in the soil. If there's nothing deeper in the soil for fertility, you better start addressing that by deeper placement of your nutrients. But that's another topic. Yeah, and here's really the most important thing. You're gonna get this great soil sample. There's lots of data on there. But how are you gonna read that information? Well, we don't have time to discuss that today, but we will talk about that on next week's show and we'll get you started in how you can read your own soil tests and how you can be a soil test expert in a relatively short amount of time. Well, great soil testing on your farm could help you save money on fertilizer, but it definitely won't help you control our weed of the week. Can you identify this tough weed? 